We're back with another how-to video, and today we're breaking down designing and making patches. My name is Brooks, I run a brand called Nowhereland, and this is episode nine, Going Nowhere. Like most products, patches come in a variety of materials and styles, which can be a little bit overwhelming when deciding which direction to go in. But I do think it's an important step to figure out before you jump into designing anything. So let's break down some of the patch options to give you a better idea of what you might want to use for your project. Embroidered. This is the classic patch style and probably the most common. A great way to give your design texture and depth with thread, but you do tend to lose a little detail with this option, but that is part of the embroidered look. Chanel, typically used for letterman jackets or for simple bold lettering and designs, where they lack in the ability to capture detail, they make up for with cool, fuzzy carpet-like texture. Printed and sublimated. Using screen printing or sublimation, you can transfer your design directly onto the thread. Leather, pretty straightforward. You can have your design etched or embossed into a different variety of colors and leather styles. PVC, these are rubberized patches that hold up well to the elements. This material lets you have a unique three-dimensional effect as well as a tactile feel. PVC is great for outdoor and utility gear. Bullion, using gold and silver metal filaments, weave like thread, giving these patches an unquestionably high dollar look, but these take time to make by hand and aren't tremendously affordable. And last but not least, my favorite style and the one we're going to be using today, the woven patch. It has many of the benefits of embroidery, but due to the tighter weave, you can pack in way more detail in the same amount of space. Now that we know what kind of patch style we want to use, let's jump into the design and see what we can come up with. I like to keep my patch designs relatively simple. Although the woven process really captures a lot of the detail, I typically make my patches between two and a quarter to two and a half inches tall. That way they can be put on hats and other products. So the overall design will be pretty small when made, so simple is usually better. But if you wanna go all out on your design and push the limits of the woven patch process, I say go for it. Okay, so I finished this patch design and I sat with it for a few days and I decided I really didn't like the finished piece, but I did still like the overall concept. So I went ahead and started over. Here's round two. I think this second version looks a lot better. I went with the more structured font, but I kept the overall concept and color scheme. Now we could stop right here, but I wanted to work up a more detailed option so you could see a full range of the woven patch ability. So here's what I worked up for that.
For this design, I'm reworking an older drawing of mine, adding in a little more detail and nature elements. I try to keep my patch designs to six colors max. Each new color is a new thread, which adds additional cost. So now we have all three new patch designs finished up, and now the next step is to get the art files ready to send to the manufacturer. These designs need to be vector to work within their digitizing software, so let's bring those into Illustrator and get them all set up. For the print ready art, I'm going to call out the Pantone colors, set the dimensions, and call out any additional finishing options. For most patches, I like to add on heat seal backing. That way people can iron these onto fabric without having to sew them, although we do still recommend sewing them for extra durability. Some other finishing options would be an embroidered edge, a marrow edge or hot cut edge. Now my go-to is the marrowed edge. I think it gives it a nice raised border and a traditional patch feel. But whatever you want to go with, make sure to call that out in the art file. Okay, I'm happy with the designs and the art files are all set up. So I'm going to go ahead and send these over to the manufacturer. Then they'll get back to me with an estimate, a minimum order quantity, which is usually around 100 pieces and their estimated turn time. The company I use to make my patches is called Sunny Season International. I'll link their information below. I know there's a lot of different patch manufacturers out there. So so I'll link a couple other options below. That way you can compare and see which works better for you. Once I approve the pricing, the next step is to get a sew out of the pack. This is basically a sample that they make to show you before they run full production. This process usually takes about a week, but because of the magic of the internet, I have those proofs ready to go now. So let's take a look at what they sent. This is the last chance to make any edits before full production. So I take this time to double check spelling, size, red color, and any other details within the project. After taking a little time to look at the patches and make sure I'm happy with them, I went ahead and gave them the green light to move forward. So in about three to four weeks, I'll have 300 little patch babies at the doorstep. Or in three to four seconds. stoked on how these designs translated into patches. You can scoop these up on my website right now at nowherelandsupply.com along with a bunch of other products. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or if you have any suggestions or tips on how you got your patches made, I'd love for the comment section of these videos to be an ongoing resource for people to refer back to to help them make their own products. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, I almost forgot, like and subscribe or don't.